Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture of Chemical Process Design and Simulations course code CHE 446. So as we know there are four CLOs of this course. Number one is related to the fundamentals. Number two is related to simulation. Number three is related to the analysis. And number four is related to the design. So over this activity is linked with CLO number one and partially with CLO number four. So in this lecture, first we will learn the basic concepts of heat exchange. And we will see how we can draw the temperature enthalpy diagram. Basically, it's a graphical method. And then we will use the problem table approach. Basically, we will use these two methods to find the utilities requirement for us heat exchange system and the pinch temperatures. And then we will move forward to the much complex system based on the concepts from this exercise. So if you look at this diagram you can see that this reactor is a black box obviously we are not interested what is going on and what reaction is going on this reactor feed which is coming to this reactor it is heated to 200 degrees centigrade from 20 degrees centigrade using a heater and the product is leaving the reactor at 150 degrees centigrade which is cooled down to 50 degrees centigrade using a cooler firstly the stream which needs to be heated is known as a cold stream and the stream which exchanges its heat uh, or you can say loses its temperature during the heat exchange process is known as hot stream. So that is quite evident that the stream which is going from 150 degree centigrade to 50 degree centigrade is a hot stream. And this stream 20 to 200 degree centigrade is a cold stream. Or in other words, you can say that the hot stream is that stream whose initial temperature is high as compared to the last temperature or final temperature. So this 150 is higher than 50. It means it's a hot stream or which needs to be cooled down it's a hot stream and opposite is count for the cold stream consider the simple process shown below there is a chemical reactor which will be treated at present as a black box liquid is supplied to the reactor and needs to be heated from near ambient temperature to the operating temperature of reactor conversely a hot liquid product from the separation system needs to be cooled down to a lower temperature so we are using currently the utilities here we are using a heating utility there may be steam or furnace oil or anything else and for this we are using cooling utility which could be cooling water air and so on so any flow which requires to be heated or cooled but does not change in composition this is to be noted that when this is entering the reactor its composition is not changing it's only heating and when it is leaving the reactor, it is cooled down, but there is no change in the composition. The feed which start cold and needs to be heated up is known as cold stream. So as you can see, it's starting from cold 20 degrees centigrade and then heated up to 200 degrees centigrade. So it's a cold stream and the hot product which must be cooled down is called a hot stream. Conversely, the reaction process is not a stream because it involves a change in chemical composition. The makeup flow is not a stream because it is not heated or cooled. So the stream which is involved in the heat exchange process, we can call it as either hot stream or cold stream depending on the temperatures and the heat exchange phenomena. But it should be noted that there is no change in the composition. When there is a change in a composition, especially in case of reactor, we cannot call it as a hot or cold stream. So this must be noted before going to the problems of pinch analysis. Now this system is further specified over here. As you can see, it is entering 20 degrees centigrade to and then hitting up to 200 degrees centigrade, 150 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade. It might be our requirement to decrease the utility requirement because currently 180 kilowatt heating is required to heat the feed from 20 to 200 degrees centigrade and 180 kilowatt cooling duty is required to cool down it 150 degree centigrade to 50 degree centigrade but obviously it is our requirement that by somehow we can exchange heat between these two and decrease the utility requirement means we can somehow decrease 180 kilowatt to some lower value so that we can save our utilities requirement this is the basic purpose of this pinch exercise as we have discussed in our previous lecture that it is used to optimize the system to decrease the heating requirements cooling requirements of the system. So as you can see the cold stream, its mass flow rate is 0.25 kg per second. Its specific heat capacity is 4. This heat capacity flow rate is calculated by multiplying specific heat capacity by 
mass flow rate. So four multiplied by 0.25 is one. Then initial temperature, which is the supply temperature, is 20 degree centigrade. Final temperature is 200 degree centigrade, and the heat load is plus 180. In different books, you find different nomenclature, and these nomenclature may be different, but the final philosophy will be the same. I am taking it as final minus initial multiplied by heat capacity. So it is plus 180. If I take it as initial minus final multiplied by one, then it would be minus 180. So it's up to you whichever nomenclature you want to take. But I am taking the nomenclature as final minus initial multiplied by heat capacity. So 200 minus 20 multiplied by one is 180. Similarly, for hot stream, the mass flow rate given is 0.4 kg per second. Specific heat capacity 4.5. Multiplying it gives you an answer of 1.8. The initial temperature is 150 degrees centigrade. The final temperature is 50. And if you multiply it like 50 minus 150 minus 100 multiplied by 1.8 minus 180, this plus minus basically shows the direction of the process. And the important question is, can we reduce the energy consumption? If you look back the diagram, 20 to 200 degrees centigrade, and the hot stream highest temperature is 150 degrees centigrade. It shows That if we talk about thermodynamically, we cannot exchange the complete heat. Means 180 kilowatt heating duty is required for this process, and 180 kilowatt cooling duty is required for this process. So we cannot eliminate the whole heating or whole cooling duty because it will be a temperature cross. We need to heat this whole stream to the temperature above the hot stream. So there will be a temperature cross. I hope you have understood my point that we cannot heat the stream to One uh, or above 150 degrees centigrade because that will cross with this hot inlet. So as you can see, yes, if we can recover some heat from the hot stream and use it to heat the cold stream in a heat exchanger, we will need less steam and water. Obviously, we are taking if we are taking steam or furnace oil or whatever the heating utility is available, and same in the case of cooling utility. So 20 degrees centigrade, there is a heat exchanger. Then this temperature is unknown. Similarly, 150 degrees centigrade heat is exchanged. This temperature is unknown. And now the heating and cooling requirements will be lesser. But for this, you have to install a heat exchanger. But definitely, that will be a one-time cost, the fixed cost of installing this heat exchanger. After that, once you get the payback, you will be in the profit of this system. So this is the temperature enthalpy diagram. The first method, or we can say it is as a graphical method, to find the heat requirements, the heating utility and the cooling utility. Now, if you see, the heat load. Is placed on x-axis. The temperature is placed on y-axis. This dotted line represents the hot stream. This solid line represents the cold stream. And as you can see, this line is at 20 degrees centigrade, corresponds to this 20 to 200 degrees centigrade. And this line represents 150 to 50 degrees centigrade. And the arrow shows that the temperature is decreasing. So this is a hot stream, and this one is temperature is increasing from 20 to 200 degrees centigrade. This is the Cold stream. Now these two streams are interacting at this point. This is known as the pinch point, and we can say it as the minimum temperature approach point. And as you can see, once these two lines are just not crossing each other, but interacting with intersecting with each other, then this point is known as the delta T minimum, the minimum temperature approach, the energy target for the system. And as you can see, if this point currently it is zero, once it is zero, it means you need a very high heat exchanger. Area for it, so obviously practically it is not possible. So usually we have a some value of temperature difference between these two streams. Currently, it is at nearly one for forty degrees centigrade for hot stream and for cold stream. But we will discuss it. What will be the temperature here when we will move to the real time performance of these? This portion, as you can see, this portion represents the heat recovery. So as you can see. With delta T minimum, the value of approach temperature as zero, the heat recovery is 130 kilowatt, while heating duty is 50 kilowatt and cooling duty is 50 kilowatt, mainly very small. But for this, this heat exchanger, the size of this heat exchanger will be huge. So what we need to do, we need to have the space between these two lines, and the value corresponds to it is called as the minimum approach temperature, minimum temperature approach, delta T minimum. Currently, as I have told you, it is zero over here. But once these two lines have some distance between, that will corresponds to some delta T minimum, which could be 10, 20, 30, and so on. Usually in industry, 10 to 20 degrees centigrade is preferred for the heat exchangers for 
better operation and for feasible operation. Now, let me show you how this diagram is made. Firstly, you need a graph paper for it. And you can see the x axis represents the heat load, the y axis represents the temperature 0, 30, 60, 90 with an interval of 30 degrees centigrade, 0 to 300. And the 0, I have mentioned it at 20 because 20 is involved in our exercise. Similarly, 0 to 210 and then 200 is involved over here. And you can see what are the values involved in our case. 200, 150, 20 and 50 degree centigrade. So, 200 degree centigrade, 20 degree centigrade. Now, first we need to draw the hot diagram or you can say the hot streamline. It will be from 150 degree centigrade to 50 degree centigrade this point. However, we need to check that whether the heat load is met or not. This must be checked as well. So as you can see, if you take this line to this point, you can see the heat load is 180 kilowatt and that was the heat load in your case as well. Now for the same, this line represents the cold line, the black line. And as you can see, it is from 20 degree centigrade to 200 degree centigrade. And again, it is 180 kilowatt. However, both these lines are crossing each other and that is the point which I was telling you that if we want to exchange heat between both these streams, complete heat exchange, then these lines will cross each other because that is practically not feasible. So now what we need to do, we need to make sure that cold stream temperature is always lesser than the hot stream. That is not possible that the cold stream temperature is higher than hot stream. It can be equal or can be made equal to the hot stream but it cannot be above the hot stream. So what you need to do, you need to horizontally vary it and horizontally, as you can see, you need to horizontally take it to the right side, but you cannot take it to vertical direction because if you take it vertical direction, then you can see the temperature is now below 20. So this is not your requirement. Your requirement is that the temperature should remain the same, that it should remain from 20 degree centigrade to 200 degree centigrade. And for this, you need to take it to the horizontally and right direction. And you can see at this point, these two lines are intersecting which, with each other. And you can see the region. If I take you again that this region, as you can see, this region represents the heat recovery portion. This one is your utility requirement. And this one is your utility requirement. Obviously, this requirement is on the cold line. So, when this requirement is on the cold line, it means you need here a heating utility. And this requirement is on the hot line. It means you require a cold utility over here. If I take you back again, that above the heat recovery portion, you need a heating duty. And below the heat recovery portion, you need a cooling duty. The cooling duty is required on the hot line. The heating utility is required on the cold line. So, as you can see, the diagram is the same as that I have shown you previously and this corresponds to nearly 50 kilowatt because we are not using a graph paper. If you use a graph paper and use perfect lines for each, then you will be able to find that this utility requirement is 50 kilowatt and this utility requirement is also 50 kilowatt. Now, if I vary it more and if I take this value, if you see this, these two points are now currently intersecting with each other or uh, you can see touching each other. But if I enlarge the space between these two points, what will happen? As you see now, I have been moving it more right. And nearly at this point, as you can see, this point represents 140 degree centigrade. This point represents 150 degree centigrade. So as you can say that there is a delta T minimum of 10 degree centigrade, which is 150 of hot while 140 of cold. As you can see, this point nearly corresponds to 140 degree centigrade and a bit buggish. And as you can see, this represents the delta T minimum of your system. The hot line is ending here and this minus this. Obviously, it is not necessarily that the always the point should be at the end of hot line. It could be the point could be over here as well. But if I show you again that once that the if I take you here and if I take it here, it is crossing the red line. It should not cross the hot line. It, the pinch point will start from the point where there is no crossing. This point is the pinch point of 0 degree centigrade. If I take it more to the right side, this point is a point where the hot temperature is 150 and the cold temperature is 140. And at this point, the utility requirement is 60 kilowatt. And at this point, it is 240. 
No, it is not 240. It is 240 minus 180. Because if you see, if I take you back again, the line was originally here and the utility requirement was 180 kilowatt. And when I have moved this line to right side over here, then it has moved from 182 to at 0 degree centigrade, it has moved to around 230 kilowatt. So this minus this means this 230 minus 180 or you can say it as 230 minus this 50 because it has moved to this 50 kilowatt line. But let me this that this 50 kilowatt line has moved. Ki hai. To us se ye jitne kilowatt yahan se line has moved, it will move to the next kilowatt. ठीक है तो अब ये 230 किलोवाट पे है तो जब ये 230 किलोवाट पे है तो 230 minus 50 कितना हो गया 180 now if I move it further to for example this point then don't be confused that it is a 240 किलोवाट no this 240 this end point minus 60 will be 180 so this heat load should remain same at all points similarly obviously we are not varying or we are not shifting cold curve this is our first example. So there is no nothing to do with the hot, hot point curve. But for the cold point curve, when we are shifting the curve or when we are shifting the line over here, then we must be sure that at each point it should be 180 kilowatt. And once I move it further and take it further, then you can see it corresponds to nearly a temperature of 130 degree centigrade while it is 150. So now it is 20 kilowatt. And now, if you see, it is approximately 70 kilowatt heat load over here, which is for the cold utility. And again, here, as you can see, it is 250 minus 70. So what it will be? It will be definitely 180 kilowatt. So 180 kilowatt is maintained. And above this portion means 180 minus 250. So 70 kilowatt the utility is required over here. And here, 70 cooling utility is required over here like this is the heat recovery portion for this system now this one this 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 one required represents the cooling utility requirement of 70 kilowatt again this 180 minus this one 250 so this portion represents the heating requirement so it means that at delta t minimum of 20 degree centigrade this 150 minus 130 at delta t minimum of 20 degree centigrade 70 kilowatt heating utility is required and 70 kilowatt cooling utility is required. It sh should be remembered that in each case the heating and utility, cooling utilities cannot be same. It could be different like heating utility could be 20 kilowatt, cooling utility could be 60 kilowatt. But one thing to be noted, if you shift the curve or shift the point, if it is increased by 10 kilowatt, then it will also be increased by 10 kilowatt. This is for sure that when you are shifting the cold line, and if you see that 10 kilowatt cooling utility is increased, then 10 kilowatt heating utility will be increased as well. But overall change, overall figure could be different. Like in this case, it was earlier 50-50. Then when you have shifted it, it could become 60-60. Then it becomes 70-70. So likewise, if your heating utility is 20 kilowatt and cooling utility is 70 kilowatt, then if you increase cooling by 10, which is 80, then heating will be 30. So that's how the graphical method works over here. And for this, remember one thing that you need graph before proceeding for it. A helpful method of visualization is the temperature heat content diagram as illustrated. The heat content or heat load of a system is frequently called as enthalpy. And for this system and for even problem table approach, the value of Cp is assumed to be constant. That the value of Cp which is m multiplied by Cp, small Cp. And in if I take you back, I am talking about this value, heat capacity flow rate. This Cp is assumed to be constant. It is not varying in the system. And this is the same line that note that the hot stream is represented by the line with arrow. And we have already discussed these lines as well. So now you can see that when there is a temperature difference, which is the delta T minimum of 20 degree centigrade, then the heating utility requirement is 70 kilowatt and cooling duty requirement is 70 kilowatt which I have already showed you in the previous slide as well. And remember one thing that the total heat load should be 180 kilowatt for this. As you can see this is 70 minus 250. So total heat load is 180 kilowatt but the heating utility requirement is 70 kilowatt for this cold stream and for 
hot stream, the cooling utility requirement is 70 kilowatt. The cold stream is shifted on the edge axis relative to the hot stream so that the minimum temperature difference is no longer zero but positive and finite. And obviously, I have told you that if it is zero, then you need a heat exchanger of high area, high space requirement. So, obviously, that is not practically possible. The effect of this shift is to increase the utility heating and cooling by equal amounts. As I have told you that if cooling is increased by 10 kilowatt, then heating will increase by 10 kilowatt and reduce the load in the heat exchanger by the same amount. Here, 20 kilowatt, so that 70 kilowatt of external heating and cooling is required. This arrangement is now practical because delta T minimum is non-zero. Clearly, further shifting employs delta T minimum values and larger utility consumption. So, as you can see, when your delta T minimum value was 10, then utility requirement was 60 kilowatt. When it increased to 20, utility requirement was 70 kilowatt. It means with increasing this value of delta T minimum, your utility requirement will increase. But in our upcoming lecture, we will see a trade-off that to which point we should increase the delta T minimum value so that the we can get the optimized cost with allowable utility requirements. From this analysis, two basic facts emerge. First, there is a correlation between the value of delta T minimum and the total utility requirements. As I have already told you that with the increase, in the value of delta T minimum, the utility requirement will increase. This means that if we choose a value of delta T minimum, we have an energy target for how much heating and cooling we should be using if design our heat exchanger correctly. And secondly, if the hot utility is increased by a value of alpha, the cold utility is also increased by a value of alpha. More in, more out. So we have already discussed and we have proved these two facts. Number one, that the increase in value of delta T minimum, increase in utility requirements. Number two, more the utility, one utility, the same will be the second utility. Means if the value of hot utility is increased by 10 kilowatt, the value of cold will be increased by the 10 kilowatt and so on. So that's it from this lecture. Thank you so much.